So this video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have a quick little discussion hitting some main points on the feasibility of having ARM based chips in future upcoming handheld gaming PCs. We're going to cover the pros, the cons and the, the future outlook of game compatibility, because I do think we have quite a bit of news on this front that could lead to pretty big changes in the near future. And if you guys do end up enjoying this video, a like, subscribing, it helps other people to find the video. But let's go ahead and begin with the pros of actually putting an ARM chip in a gaming handheld. And this is twofold. The big one is definitely the power efficiency. And to fully grasp the difference here, just compare the battery life of your phone versus your laptop. I'm not saying phones have amazing battery life, but most of the time you can go for most of the day, regardless of the usage, without really worrying too much about it. And that's in contrast to an x86 laptop that at best has like two, maybe three hours of battery life. So that's point one. The power efficiency is on a completely different level between ARM and x86. And the second point that's related is the, the thermals. An ARM chip, due to its greater efficiency, is going to require a lot less cooling. And this is critical for mobile devices. And if we take a look at Apple laptops, this is why a couple of years ago, they switched over fully to ARM-based chips on their laptops and desktops. The raw performance is just as good, if not better, than comparable x86 chips, and the battery life and the cooling, it's all phenomenal on this platform. But by far, the biggest con of ARM chips is the software compatibility. It's a completely different platform architecture than x86, and thus apps need to be either translated or natively developed for ARM chips. Now here, Windows does have a pretty effective built-in automatic translation software known as Prism. And I gotta say, it does work extremely well. Essentially, the smaller the application, the more efficient the translation is. But when you get up to larger applications, especially games, this is where the translation becomes more of a hit to the performance. Also, some games have an issue with anti-cheat, just simply not working at all on the ARM platform. And because of this, for gaming on ARM to really work and take off, the games have to be native. And I will say on this front, we do have a pretty big recent development. So we have news that Microsoft is looking to essentially combine Xbox with Windows. We have rumors that the next Xbox is essentially going to be a PC just with a full screen Xbox experience, similar to what we see already with the Asus Xbox Ally X. And this is relevant to the discussion around ARM because Microsoft and by extension Xbox have said that they are committed to making the Xbox gaming experience fully native on the ARM platform. And once Xbox does do this and they are fully ARM compatible, it's only going to be a matter of time before Steam, Epic Games, and other stores also begin to roll out ARM native applications. And the exciting thing here is that once that is in place, there's really no reason to not see an ARM-based gaming handheld. If we take a look at the new Snapdragon X2 Elite, this just came out, you're going to see it in more devices in 2026. And fundamentally, this is a fantastic performer of a chip. The CPU, both the single and multi-core, is roughly on par with the Apple M4 chip. And supposedly, the graphical performance, the iGPU, has seen a 2.3 times upgrade in performance. And for context, that would put it somewhere in the range of the Z1 Extreme, if not a little bit better. So you can see that once the compatibility is there, possibly being ushered in by this change at Xbox, how they are both merging Xbox with the Windows platform and making it ARM compatible, then it's really only a matter of time before we see gaming handhelds with ARM-based chips. And I know personally, I would definitely buy an ARM-based handheld simply for the efficiency gains. I'm a big fan of my Legion Go S, but it only gets about two hours of battery life. And if it had the Snapdragon X2 or X3 Elite, the battery life would be significantly better. We're talking more than double. So that's the latest on the situation when it comes to ARM chips potentially being seen in the near future on gaming handhelds. Definitely let us know your take in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.